Okay, so here we go. This is dr uh, Dragon Study 16, we're calling this guy. Now, again, I'm kind of starting in my usual fashion. Uh, I've, I've got the sketch, the, draw the pencil sketch transferred uh, and printed out, uh, scanned in, printed out on archival material, mounted down with matte medium on a masonite panel. All that trimmed up and a few coats of matte medium on it so that's ready to go and all ready for oil paint um, and again I'm going to start with uh, sort of translucent layers of burnt sienna and try and establish just sort of some movement in the background some kind of a pattern um, this is pretty arbitrary and this is you know it could be different every time I could have done made the whole background white for example um, and you know or, or whatever strikes you in the moment this is sort of the the off the cuff kind of lay it in and then we really try and pull the the dragon out of this and again with this guy you know I was going for something that was a little uh, a little more high key in in the uh, in his I, I'll call it his color but it really is a value in this piece he's a whiter dragon rather than something that's a more middle tone dragon so one of my first things is to establish the white on the piece, you know, so that's what I did there. And um, it's the white tends to be a little more opaque. So it does obliterate some of the drawing a little more quickly. And again, you can uh, I, I'm sure that I have the original drawing off off camera here that I'm also looking at as we're working on this guy. Um, but. Uh, I did lay in a fairly dark chunk of color under uh, of that uh, burnt umber under the chin. And that's really where most of the dark is there and in the mouth on this particular guy. So that's just a, even though I'm not getting into blending all that yet, I just want to lay that in so that I can see it and use it as a reference point so that I can tell with the other tones, you know, that I'm definitely moving in the right direction. Um, and you'll kind of see here as we move down around the jaw that, you know, it's the shadow doesn't really change. I just put in a blended edge and I take a couple of, you know, a couple of pokes at it and just kind of adjust the value of the paint that's on my, on my brush at that point. It's important you can see the jaw there uh, established. And there were some darks that you know had to be played down a little bit or sharpened up, so that's all well and good. But at this point, you know you can see, especially on the neck, where it's a very bracketed light value that I'm using. You know, there's the white, and then there's a color that's just a little bit darker than the white. And so I may have a few, I'm, you know, I've, I've just mixed these loosely on the palette. It's, I haven't really gone to a lot of trouble to pre-mix these things, but I, um, but I have a few values there, a few puddles of paint that I can just refer back to so that I can get back to achieving that same value. Um, especially when you're painting something light or white, um, you can, it's real easy to let the dark part of it get away from you. So that's something I'm conscious of as I'm working through this. I'm also, you know, I'm because the white is so much more opaque and it's is covering the drawing as I go. I don't have that to refer back to like I would if uh, I had done more of a glaze over this thing and I was still able to see the pencil drawing. So a lot of times when I do lighter colored dragons, I tend to move a little slower and try and be a lot more deliberate about the brush strokes and, the, and where I'm putting the, the value.
you know, like the ear and the nose, you can see there just a little bits of the dark, but it's really used in a very minimal way. And uh, it gives a nice accent, a nice accent to it. And even the area, the left side of the dragon's neck now, you know, I've laid in the white and I'm starting to, to uh, blend that in because I'm, I'm, it's a transition that I'm really looking for there. Of course, working it on its side like this is great for these little these little spines in the fins. I've said that many times. I, I flip them, I flip them all the time. Sometimes, even when I'm looking at something on its side, it it, it just for a second gives a sense of abstraction to the piece. And you may see something in the form or the way the light is, is shining that, or, or that you're trying to make it shine that, uh, you know, you may be able to correct or see something that you just didn't see when you look at it acclimated upright in that same way all the time. You're, you sort of get used to seeing it that way and you get used to seeing the mistakes as well as the good stuff. So um, it's, it's just a, it's something I've always done, move, uh, turning these things on their side and upside down. I also, I've mentioned, I keep a mirror next to my drawing table and I look at things in the mirror and reverse them. When I'm working in traditional media now, digital media, of course, you can flip, you can flip them in the, you know, and we're actually work on them backwards, which is great. That's a little tougher to do here in the real world. And again, just a couple little pecks, white, uh, some wetness on the eye and establish and clean up some of these things. And there we go.